Ruler School is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory and these amazing patrons. Extra special thank you to guest lecturer patrons Brody Harris and Lance Albertson. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there everyone, DM073 here bringing you a feature match for the week. Today I am playing a blue-black Rhea discard deck. Um, really the only blue card is Aramon to be able to look at my opponent's hand to make things like Glint of Insight better. Uh, and I am playing against Alan uh, from Malaysia. You might know him as the guy who kind of heads up the Force of Will Malaysia team, the creator of all those cool energized tokens and stuff. He did come uh, to Gen Con and so what we finally got to sit down together and play a game and he is playing his Paladin Gill list. So we'll have to kind of see if Rhea Discard can uh, kind of keep up with the fact that with all of the Leaf Paladins and the searchability of Gill, if uh, Rhea can keep up. So going into my first turn, I hit a Dark Depth Stone. I'm going to go ahead and cast a Time Reversal because I didn't have a discard spell. Let's me draw a card and get a Mystery Counter and then pass the turn. Only going to his turn, hitting a Blasting Waves off the top. End of turn, he has to mill with Gil. Mills a um, Vanish. Go to my turn. Call for a Remains of Adoraktia, so I have to pay 300 life for it. Play two to play a Baleful Avatar, forcing him to discard a card of his choice. Card that was from Vingolf 3. Hasn't seen a lot of play, but I wanted to try to put as much discard stuff in my deck as possible. At the end of turn, he's going to use... Um, Fifth element, reveal two leaves to go ahead and kill him. Burning his Energize in two, he plays that Leaf Paladin, which he managed to get off the top there. So he gets to fill his hand with a lot of elementals. This is just one of the things, again, that makes me really concerned that Ray is going to be able to keep up, just because, just like this, he just gained four cards off of just playing one card. So no matter how much I empty his hand, he's going to probably be able to refill, and then he can use those elementals later to search for more spells. Pitching the White Leaf to go ahead and gain 6 life, rather than having to discard it at the end of turn, and then milling 1, hitting a second Vanish, which feels good for me. The fewer cancel spells he has, the better. Calling Stone, hitting another Dark Depths. Unfortunately, not having anything to play there, so I have to just pass the turn. At the end of the turn, he's going to banish the white leaf to produce green uh, just to get a elemental underneath Gil there. Calling for a stone, hitting a black silence. Going to try to swing at me for five. I'll attempt to cast Sword of the New uh, Half Moon to try to deal a six, minus six, minus six to hit. He will banish a leaf to then cast a vanish, so there's cancel spell number three. Gonna respond by burning an energized counter to awaken spider's web. Picks the modes to deal minus six, minus three to the leaf paladin, so I won't take damage, and to bring the baleful avatar back to my hand. He says, sure, that's fine, so I don't take any damage. Um, and I get to get a creature back to my hand. Playing one more to hard cast a black leaf. And then getting to mill. So uh, mill's a leaf palette in there, which is not too bad considering how he can recycle his elementals. Black leaf is honestly probably one of the strongest um, of the little leaf rangers. Um, minus four, minus four uh, for a one cost that you can kind of activate at instant speed and hits J Resonators is pretty significant. I'm gonna go ahead and do Blood Sprain to kill the black leaf uh, and draw two cards and take three damage. And then play an Aramon. So, like I said, this is where the blue comes in. Let's me peek at his hand to be able to start setting up cards like um, free effects for Glint of Insight. So I just always know what's in his hand, um, so I can make sure to rip the most cards possible from Glint. At 
paying one here to play uh, after banishing an elemental to play absolute awareness this lets him get a basic stone and bring it into play tapped it's a very strong card for Gil, especially post rotation um, because we're going to be going into a format of a lot of uh, no dual stones so the fact that he's going to be able to have a pretty free ramp spell um, is pretty significant i think playing another black leaf here swinging in for five i say that's fine i'll take it go down to 29. I don't want to risk losing Aramon when I'm about to start trying to do a lot of cancel work. Playing two more to play a Red Leaf and then passing the turn. So Red Leaf can burn for six damage by sacrificing. I'm gonna, before I call for some, I'm going to look at his hand. See a Severing, a Blue Leaf, a uh, Leaf Paladin, and I think the other card is another Black Leaf. Calling Stone, hitting an Adoraktia, having to pay 300. Paying four to cast Blazer. Taking the Severing Winds out of his hand. Then calling Thought Control now that this, to take the Leaf Paladin. So putting him to just having one black leaf and one blue leaf is pretty is pretty good at this point. Um, minimizing his hand. Again, the problem is, though, he's got a lot of... Uh, the more I make him discard his hand, the more leaves he has in the grave, or elementals he has in the grave, which just makes Gil even more of a powerhouse to be able to search. So it's kind of like by discarding him, actually helping him, um, which is one of the weird parts about this matchup. So he'll pay... Uh, cast Gentle Breeze Elemental there, I think at the end of my turn, to use the Floating Green. Swing in for five. Oh, before then, he decides to play another Black Leaf. Swings in for five. Block with the Armon. Sacrifices the Black Leaf so that it um, just becomes a regular blit trade. Decided to take the six damage from the Red Leaf. I think this was probably a poor decision. Um... I just as easily could have blocked with the blazer and been pretty safe. Uh, and then if he uses the black leaf, I just banish it. Uh, and then I trade into the red leaf. Um, another Adorak remains of Adoraktia, choosing not to pay the life for it. Paying one for a thought control. Look at the last couple cards of his hand. Alan deciding if he wants to do something before that card's going to resolve. Banishes the Black Leaf, attempts to banish the Black Leaf to deal minus four, minus four to the Blazer. I say, sure, that's fine. Make him discard the Lorite. Pay two to play Baleful Avatar, forcing him to discard the other last card in his hand. He's going to sacrifice the um, Red Leaf to try to kill the Blazer. I'm going to try to cancel it with the effect of Blazer. And then he's going to banish three spirit magics to bring back Lorite and then hard cast the Lorite, so which cancels the Blazer's effect. So it is going to be a trade for the Blazer, unfortunately. So the smarter play might have been to go ahead and swing into the Leaf Paladin first um, before making the Baleful Avatar play. But then after the Lorite's still in play and he has to discard the other card in his hand. At this point in time, I unfortunately have to pass. So I have, he's going to uh, RFG a blue leaf at the end of the turn to be able to produce will and just have more leaves, um, elementals underneath Gil. Paying three for Gil. Um, he's going to perform judgment. Before he performs judgment, he's going to banish to produce green. Gonna try to sort of the new moon in response to the judgment as well before he can start searching for spells to go ahead and kill the leaf paladin gill's gonna come in banish to produce another green another two green at this point and then he can use gill's effect to put two cards back two elementals back in the deck to search for any chant uh, any spell that he wants, any chance spell. He starts to go for absolute awareness, um, but then decides to go for spiritual awakening, which I think is the better call here. Um, he starts to shuffle up, and then he goes, wait a minute, why am I grabbing this? Uh, I need cards in my hand. 
I've got three floating will. Absolute awareness um, doesn't really help him right now. He's got so many stones. Um, spiritual guidance he can cast for free, and it draws him two cards, which is pretty important when I've kind of been ripping his hands to shreds. So cast it for free, gets to draw two, and then gains some life. Gains three life there. Drew into another leaf paladin. So at that point in time, he passes the turn to me. Performing, um, attempting to cast another blazer. Gonna attempt to bounce his Lorite back to his hand with the blue leaf. Sure, sure, that's fine. And he's gonna cast the Lorite to cancel the effect to look at his hand with the blazer. So, um, it's smarter for me to have, um, done it that way i could have potentially tried to kill the blade the lorry in response um but he has enough spirit magics in the grave that he could just recycle it anyway activate time reversal to draw a card and uh, gain a mystery counter call stone with raya get a murky depths or murky waters it's the blue black countdown stone Attempt to cast Glint of Insight. It's going to respond by using Gill's effect to put two, uh, to banish to produce two green. And he's going to cycle back into his deck. I imagine he grabs Severing Winds at this point. He's going to cancel it. I say that's fine. Cast another, another time reversal to draw a card and gain a mystery counter back. And then pass the turn there. At the end of the turn, he's going to use one of the floating green to cast Gentle Breeze Elemental. And then draw for his turn. So this is where you can kind of see again, um, against the discard deck, Gil can just keep cycling stuff, and eventually he's going to be able to reach a point where he can just search up hard cast severing wins, um, and so it doesn't really matter, even if I have discard stuff, like, he can always kind of replenish his hand off after a glimpse of insight, especially if I try to call a spell, which is just really not good. So he casts the leaf pellet in here, I don't have a way to stop it, so he's going to get three back because the blue leaf is still in the grave. Um, he could have easily put it on Gil and then cycled, but he doesn't necessarily want to use his cycle um, proactively. It's stronger for him to just wait and see, uh, especially since as the game goes on, those cycles become increasingly more powerful. Casting the black leaf that he got off of the white leaf. I attempt to block the blazer with the blazer against the gill. He's going to reveal three. Uh, so blazer's going to die, and I get to take 1,100 damage. Go down to nine. Draw for turn. He swung with the low right two to take me down to eight. I'm a pretty disadvantageous situation here, especially since he's probably he can search for another um, leaf elemental or a fifth element, and he can just save all of those elementals in his hand. Um, the other thing is too, Raya doesn't really do much here because again, he doesn't have to search, so he can just leave the card that he wants out of his hand until after Raya resolves, and then go and search for it. So he could just easily go search for um, at the end of this turn, go search for a fifth element, draw for his turn, uh, attempt to swing in with Gil for lethal. And then if I try to block with Rhea, he uses uh, Fifth Element to uh, deal a ton of damage, sacrifices the Black Leaf to kill Rhea, and then the damage goes through. So at this point, it's pretty much over. It's just a matter of if Alan has enough um, Fifth Elements left in his deck, or if I can maybe play my way around it.
choose to pass the turn to him. Oh, actually, before I do that, I'm going to attempt to give Glint of Insight in my Graveyard Remnant. Now that I've seen his hand. Knowing that he could search for fifth element, this is kind of my only play at this moment. I have to try to get him down to zero cards so that a fifth element can't do anything. Ultimately, though, he could just respond by going to search for a fifth element and do the play now. Um, it would just put him at a less advantageous position, although he could also just use the red leaf in his hand. You can do a lot of different combinations of things to really mess with me at this point. He's going to gain 1,200 life, and then I'll um, cast the Glint of Insight to call red leaf to just get rid of the last card in his hand after he ditches the two white leaves. Pay two to put an Armon out on the field, just so I have another body with a little bit higher defense, and then pass the turn. He does get to search for two cards at this moment, but it's just two chance, so I'm feeling a little bit safer about my ability to kind of maybe survive for a couple of turns. The problem is he can put those leafs back into the deck to be able to draw them, and that's the part that really is unfortunate. I will say that while it seems Gil does get to make a use of a lot of his... Um, Leafs outside of the green stuff in uh, New Frontiers currently, even without dual stones, um, the Leafs in hand are still very strong, uh, and especially when you make use of the 4-drop Gilapis, who can also banish elementals to give you um, multicolored effects um, to be able to hard cast them as necessary, um, you still can be in a very good position here. So he's going to use the cycle for the turn to draw off of a Gentle Breeze Elemental, and then draw for the turn. Which I think is okay, he turns Gil's um, cycle into two free card draws, potentially drawing him into something he needs. Attempts to swing in for five. I'm gonna go ahead and use a mystery counter and say I'm gonna try to kill it with Sword of the New Moon before we move into blocks. Manages to produce double green. Cycle slows Lee's back in with Gil, so you can go search for a vanish, which will cost him just one. This is why we did it before blocks, though, so I can still block with the arm on. I need to have to sacrifice the black leaf to get that damage through, or risk losing his um, leaf paladin. Gonna pitch with red leaf to deal 300 damage, so it becomes a trade. This still feels okay for me, because now he's used his gill search for the turn. Um, so I'm a little bit in a better position. Choosing to take the one damage, I think, from the Lorite. I don't want him to be able to recycle Lorite as necessary. But then I decide to block it with the Baleful Avatar anyway, just to kill it. Swings in for one with the Black Leaf. I say sure, down to seven. Swings in with Gil. I go to block. He banishes the Black Leaf to deal minus four, minus four to Rhea. So she's only an eight, 12, or an eight, eight. So she can't kill Gil. Uh, but then she dies in, in instead. So at this point in time, Gil's kind of running out of resources. He's still going to be able to search for one spell a turn, but he's kind of out of ways to be able to recycle into uh, Fifth Element. Um, so the longer I can kind of keep things off, you know, I'm in a point now where I can potentially come back despite having so little life. So I just have to play the Billful Avatar and pass the turn there. I could have swung in for four, but I decided just to creep up another uh, blocker potentially draws into a Leaf Paladin off the top, which is essentially just game at that point, because he can go search for the four cards, and he can just burn anything out of the way. He can cast a Black Leaf, being able to stop Baleful Avatar, so I say, no, no way to stop it. Sees the Black Leaf, and I go, yeah, we can just be done. We can go on to game two. We start the transition. 
As we step into this transition, another reminder again to check out the Force of Will uh, Patreon if you feel like supporting the channel helps us do awesome content. You can also check out our Spreadshirt, links down below for that for awesome swag. And then be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell so you're emailed whenever one of our new videos goes live every week. Thank you guys so much for all that support. Please check out those links down below. And so now we can move on into the next game. I'm going to be taking the play again. Here's hoping that I can get a little bit better of a start. Uh, maybe keep him off those Leaf Paladins a little bit longer. It's definitely one of the cards that helps keep him in the game for a couple of reasons. One, because not only does it provide him with a lot of utility of having those cards come back, but also because it gets a lot of Elementals into the grave very quickly. Without Leaf Paladin, it's kind of weirdly enough a consistency piece and a major draw factor in being able to turn on Gil. So the hope is that maybe I can use thought controls and stuff like that to keep those Leaf Paladins out of his hand as best as possible. Remains of Autoraxia coming in for my first turn stone. Gonna go ahead and cast Thought Control, seeing the Leaf Paladin and say that can just go away. Two Gentle Breeze Elementals, a Black Leaf and a Lorite. Drawing for turn. Playing a Gentle Breeze Elemental, drawing a card from that. Casting another Gentle Breeze Elemental using the will from a Gentle Breeze Elemental to draw, and then end of turn milling, hitting an Absolute Awareness. Going to my turn, hitting another Remains of Utteroctia, choosing to pay the 3 life for that as well. Hurting myself a little bit, but I need the extra will to be able to potentially peel hands apart. Casting the Aramon to be able to look at his hand, unfortunately seeing that he drew into another Leaf Paladin. So that's going to get cast off the Energize for this next turn, which means his hand is once again full of all this good stuff. And then having the Severing Winds on top of it is just really unfortunate for me, because it's going to mean that I can't just kind of go off and try to pick his hand apart after he taps out. So Energize into Leaf Paladin, gets to go grab four Leafs there, a white, a red, a black, and the blue is already in his hand, so he doesn't, he was only playing one blue, I think, in his entire list. Which kind of makes sense, it's kind of the least optimal one. You primarily use it just to bounce low right back to your hand. Um, so it doesn't really do much. Pitches to gain six life, and then just passes the turn there. Has to mill, mills a fairer spell. Now having a Glint of Insight would be really super great right now, because I could call Severing Winds, and then and then make it Remnant, and then do other stuff. I think I actually do have a Glint here, and I might choose to cast it. I can also just use Aramon to look at his hand to see what would be the easiest card to pull. So two Black Leafs, a Lorite, two Severing Winds. I think in this position, the probably best call if I had a Glint of Insight would be to call Severing Winds first, and then call Black Leaf, um, leaving him with just Lorite, Blue Leaf, and two Red Leafs. He has no Red Will available. Black Leaf is the biggest heavy hitter, um, and Red Leaf just makes our uh, cards with me blocking Armand into a trade. Having that extra hand knowledge is really important, um, but it really is best coupled when you use something like um, Glint of Insight, and unfortunately I didn't have a follow-up play to playing the Armand, so I just have to let that go. Swinging in for five, attempt to block with the Armand, he's going to pitch to deal minus two, minus two to the Armand, going to respond. Trying to do minus six, minus three to the um, Leaf Paladin. So Aramon would still uh, survive. He's going to pitch another Black Leaf. Um, which would still make it that Aramon wouldn't die. Um, because there would be zero stat line for the attack of Leaf Paladin. And he goes, oh yeah, you're right. So just doing a little bit of mathematics here, Spider's Web is a very interesting card for that weird change. He's gonna go ahead and cast, um, use the Awakening of Red Leaf to deal minus or to deal 300 damage. Again, it still wouldn't kill me um, because my stat line is still 500 defense. So we're kind of just talking about what leaves he needs to pull here. Um, Spider's Web actually, surprisingly enough, does a lot in this interaction, forcing him to spend potentially two, maybe even three of those elementals in his hands to be able to actually make it so that's anything worse than a one, a two for one, or anything better than a two for one. So he says, yeah, that's fine, it resolves. 
um, Leaf Paladin gets killed, so I get to pull two cards out of his hand, or a card out of his hand and a card from the field, um, just for the spider's web. Chooses to play the Black Leaf here, ultimately could choose to sacrifice it to kill the Armon, and does, so I still got even more value there. I sold three cards out of his hand, so he had one card off on my board, and I lost a spider's web. All in all, that was a pretty good trade interaction for me, uh, and I got both of the Black Leafs out of his hand, so they didn't even have to use a Glint of Insight. Chooses to banish the Black Leaf at the end of turn, and then Mills, hitting a Vanish. Going to my turn. Draw for turn. Calling for stone. I know he still has that severing winds there, so I gotta be careful as well as the Lorite. Playing three to play a um, blood sucking butler. This is my way to be able to, this is actually a very effective card against leafs because you can use the mystery counters to ping things like black leaf and blue leaf off the board suboptimally for him if he tries to cast them. It's also a way for me to gain a lot of mystery counters. It's gonna go ahead and tuck um, at the end of my turn um, to and then draw a card for his turn. Calling stone, hitting a gusting darkness stone. So I know his hand, he doesn't have a way to cast the red leaves right now. So he's got two cards that he can just pitch. Draws into another leaf paladin, and I have no way to stop it because I'm not playing green. So he just gets to go grab a lot of value. He is going to have to discard a lot of cards, but ultimately he can pitch one to gain 600 life. And he doesn't really care about getting those elementals to the grave. Because once again, it fuels Gil, and it lets him sculpt his hand a little bit better to match the situation. I think I have another red leaf in there. Just go ahead and grab it. Chance for the cut. Plays the Black Leaf, tapping out for the turn, and then having to discard, I believe, at the end of the turn. It's going to pitch a White Leaf probably to gain 6 life and go up to 52. Mills for the end of the turn, and at the end of the turn, I'm going to choose to try to gain a Mystery Counter with Bloodsucking Butler, and then remove a Mystery Counter to kill... Um, Black Leaf. But I do it in an interesting combination here. I'm going to go ahead and say um, Spider's Web Awakened to deal minus six, minus three to the Leaf Paladin and bring back the Arm onto my hand. He says, sure, that's fine. I don't have a way to stop it. Uh, and then I'll remove a Mystery Counter with Blood Sucking Butler to kill it, and then remove another Mystery Counter with Blood Sucking Butler to go ahead and kill the Black Leaf. So doing this all on his turn, um, he doesn't, so he doesn't have a really way to follow it up and kill the Blood Sucking Butler. Now I can play Aramon and safely be back in that position of being able to start swinging in for damage, regaining Mystery Counters, um, and keeping his hand sculpted the way I want it. Choosing to do Judgment here, which I think is probably not optimal. I probably should be calling for another stone. Um, just so I have the access to the utility. Um, but I do actually want the more mystery counters at this point as well. This is the other kind of thing that I have going for me, really. The other hope is because I'm judgmenting first, maybe I can use Rhea to chip away at his life a little bit faster. I'm going to respond to her judgment to gain a mystery counter. So ultimately, I'm going to go up to um, a grand total of five. Should be at six, I think. He doesn't have a way to gain swiftness, so it's a pretty safe judgment. Um, I could choose to play Red Leaf, but ultimately it's not really going to do much. Um, my thought is, uh, I if he does hit a Red Stone, though, I'm in pretty bad shape because what he could do is he could play one, um, burn her for six, uh, and then pitch the other two to burn her for twelve, uh, a total of twelve damage, and I just immediately lose her. So I'm going to go ahead and. Um, 
gain uh, choose red leaf is a card he can't play if he does want to burn four cards to kill her using the black leaf two that is a potential option it still falls short by 100 he'd have to cast the white um, black leaf um, and it cost him four cards just to kill raya um which i'm kind of a little bit okay with um it's still kind of unfortunate for me because he can just recycle them but i'm kind of taking a chance by calling red leaf over something like severing winds especially since i only have one will available severing really isn't going to be able to do much for me or do much against me because i'm not casting more than one card this turn The biggest problem here, too, is the fact that Gil has Barrier. Ultimately, um, Rhea is a deck that has lots of targeted removal and lots of just have good J Ruler hate, especially if you're playing a mono black variant. The problem is Gil just can't be targeted. Um, and since I'm choosing not to play Final Battle in this list, ultimately I could have, but um, again, against a Gil list, they can pretty almost always cancel it. Um, so I just. I decided to not play Final Battle in this Darkness list again. Uh, another <laughs> weird choice by me, potentially. But that would be kind of my one way to be able to deal with Gil. Chooses to hard cast uh, White Leaf here. And then after calling for Sona, hitting a White Stone. Tucking a White Leaf here. I'm going to pay one and awaken. Sword of the New Moon to kill it and get it out of the way. He will get to banish it and gain 800 life, um, but I'm still getting stuff out of the way considering how Bloodsucking is going to be able to swing for 700. Um, so I'd rather just be able to get it out of the way now when I do have ways to be able to target it, um, target things on field with that removal, and get as much damage in as possible. Swinging for 12 in the air. So that's fine. Get down to 41. Playing an Armon so I can peek at his hand. He says he doesn't. I don't get to look at his hand because he's going to flash in the um, Lorite to cancel that. Um, he goes to block the Blood Sucking Butler, and I'll use Blood Sucking's effect to deal minus two to the Lorite. So I get to get in for that 700 damage, finally taking him below 4,000 for the first time this match. Yeah, and the attorney's going to tuck with Gil again. So the biggest thing that's um, really very strong about Gil, and one of the reasons why Fifth Element is such a strong card, is because Fifth Element just reveals them. It doesn't discard them. So what happens is you can reveal a bunch of elementals with Leaf Element, with Fifth Element, um, for one will, potentially even free, deal all this damage to something, and then those same elementals that you just revealed, you can use their awakenings. Um, it's safe from severing winds because they're just effects, um, activate abilities. Um, so you can do a lot of stuff here. Um, so it's really unfortunate that he can just search for a fifth element and pretty much clear my board as fast as he wants. Choosing what he wants to do in terms of the search. Uses spiritual guidance because, again, it is a very free card. Draws two, gains even more life. Gains nine, back up to 43. So one of the things about guild decks um, is that if you're not careful, they can actually... Sometimes deck out. Um, it is very hard for the deck to deck out, um, especially if you're being remembering to remove one elemental every single turn. Um, but it is still a possibility. Um, but the other thing is too is once the deck gets thinner and thinner and thinner, um, then every single card they're going to draw is gas that helps Gil be able to swing through for what he needs to be able to do to finish the game. Going into my turn, he's kind of rearranging his graveyard a little bit here. 
or I'm kind of, yeah, he's kind of making sure he's got like all of his spirit magics lined up with Thorites and stuff like that. He's arm on to look at his hand. There's another leaf paladin, um, a blue leaf that's severing winds and a vanish. Attempt to swing at him for five. Say, we get you can get some damage. He says, yep, that's fine. So with only four will to be able to play against um, Gil, even at three will, um, because he has the ability to banish those leaf elementals to generate extra advantage, um, it really is not a good spot. Um, especially knowing that he has a Severing Winds in hand and can potentially search for something like a Vanish. Um, also knowing that he could just at any point in time, having all those elementals in his hand, just search for a... Um, fifth element and kill Rhea. Um, the thing is though, it is better for him to wait uh, and search up those things like fifth element in response to blocks or like once he sees what's still gonna be available as a blocker, like at the end of my turn, um, because it seems like his main powerhouse to get through that lethal damage is in fact Gil. Going ahead and swinging in for 12 in the air because I say, you know what? If he's gonna use the leaf ele uh, fifth element, I might as well just take it. Otherwise I need to start chipping in this damage. There's no way for Gil to be able to fly and get it, so see what we can do. At the end of the turn, he's going to pitch two red leaves to burn the Aramon, which will generate a mystery counter for me. He's going to search at the end of the turn. So this seems like it was a little bit of a suboptimal idea. Um, he could have just used the fifth element first, like gone and searched for fifth element after banishing double for double green, um, killed the Rhea, um, and then had then pitched with the two open will to kill the um, Aramon. Um, but he is at the end of the turn going to say, I've got, I think he's got four. He's got three. So he has to choose what he wants to pitch here for. He can just search for another fifth element next turn. So it's probably best for him to just kill the blood sucking butler. Um, but chooses to actually not cast it instead. Draws for turn. Pays three, plays a Leaf Paladin, gets to go back into his deck and draw. Um, the thing about Leaf Paladin with Gil is you can, you know, have those fifth ele you know, those elementals that you're cycling for those cards, uh, and then just continuously recycle them to let Leaf Paladin keep bringing them back to your hand. Uh, and then you can also just keep recycling the Leaf Paladins again with Gil. He's a very, very big engine powerhouse, especially once he's flipped. So despite being a discard deck and having done a lot of discard at the early game, as you can see, Alan has a very, very, very full hand. Not even choosing to banish an elemental, he's just going to go ahead and hard kill Rhea with one green will by revealing four elementals. And he doesn't even, he could have revealed that he has five, he could have done 15, but there's no reason to reveal more than he had to. Chase cards the white leaf to go up to 32 life. The end of the turn, I'm going to go ahead and try to do Sword of the New Moon to try to kill the Leaf Paladin and draw, uh, and then try to gain a Mystery Counter. I don't really know why he didn't try to swing in with Gil. Um, maybe he was just not wanting to search for another uh, fifth element. Um, looking at his hand here, he's got Vanish, a Lorite, Severing Winds, a Blue Leaf, a Black Leaf, and two Red Leafs. Really, there's not much that I can even do against that hand. Um, there's just so much burn, so much uh, spot removal, and being able to recycle his Lorite several times is just very, very strong. Playing Glint of Insight. So it, he's going to use Gil's effect. Vanish an Elemental to produce double green. Spend one green to cast Vanish. I will attempt to give it um, Remnant. Pay one more to cast it again. It's going to hard cast the Severing to stop it there.
cast another arm on just to put another body on board. Uh, unfortunately, having another um, this little transition here is because our camera accidentally got bumped, but this is still the same board state. Nothing really happened since then. That glint of insight should actually be removed from the game. Um, I think I catch it here in a little bit when I'm like, wait a minute, I can't cast this again. Um, not that it necessarily really matters at this point in the game. Um, I pass the turn there. I'm gonna go ahead and recycle with Gil using the black leaf and a white leaf. Grab a fifth element. Fifth element will let him make sure to get through with any damage he needs to with Gil in response to a block. Plays the black leaf. Swings in for 11. I say that's fine, go down to 23. Attempts to gain a mystery counter at the end of the turn with. Um, Bloodsucking Butler, and then forget to kill, attempt to kill the Black Leaf, which was a mistake. Looking at his hand, we see a fifth element, two red leaves, a blue leaf, a severing winds again, uh, and a fifth element that we knew was there. Casting a glint of insight. And he could just do the same thing that he did last turn. He can banish an elemental, uh, go search for a vanish, spend it for one. When I attempt to try to give it remnant, he could even um, use uh, Lorite's effect to flash in and cancel the attempt to give it remnant. Attempting to give the remnant. He's gonna go ahead and not even worry about it. He's gonna let me just burn the counters and use up the severing winds here. Look at his hand with the other Aramon. Nothing's really changed. He's got a Lloyd, a fifth element that can deal minus ten or nine damage. Calling for stone. Hitting another murky waters, going up to five stones finally. I think six stones maybe. No, maybe just five. Casting a blood spray to try to kill the uh um black leaf and draw a couple cards. I will have to hurt myself to do it. It's gonna sacrifice it in response to kill the uh or to deal minus four, minus four to the Bloodsucking Butler. Cast a Baleful Avatar. It's gonna cast um, Fifth Element, revealing three to kill one of the Aramons. I'm not really sure why he chose not to kill, um, he, he did that because he's gonna be able to pitch uh, one of those red leaves to kill the blood sucking Butler at the end of the turn anyway, because it's a, currently a three, three. So you can just spend one and just kill it Get a mystery counter in response before it dies, and then pass the turn there. Banish and then immediately search with Gil. Gets to search for another fifth element. Swings in for 11.
take it, go down to nine. Hard casts a white leaf, or thinks about hard casting a white leaf. Jez decide to hard cast it so he can gain another eight life if he needs to. And then chooses to pass the turn there. Ultimately, at this point, it doesn't really matter anymore having the leaf. Um, unless I can grab a creature that has a lot of life. Uh, and even then, he can recycle and potentially redraw into another elemental to make that fifth element uh, just enough to kill anything that gets in the way. And uh, Gil himself can just kill me. So again, even despite being able to look at his hand and rip it apart, Gil, with, especially with Leaf Paladin, generates just so much advantage um, that it's very, very hard to come back. Even playing the second Aramon, I'm like, yeah, you have the fifth element. You have two Leafs, um, which you can just, like, cast it and then burn it. So, yeah, the game is just over there, so I admit defeat. So there you guys have it. That is the match. Go ahead and tune in this weekend for the deck profiles. They will be up this weekend. Unfortunately, we will have the other deck profiles from last week up as well. Huge thanks to Alan. It was an honor being able to play against him. Um, so huge thanks to him and, of course, all the support he's given to the channel. Go check them out, Force of Malaysia. There's a link down below. And until next time, this is CMO73. Signing off.